I'm here at the iTran boot with Tom, and I'm about to get iTran experienced. Tom, what are you up to here? Well, thanks, Kevin. I appreciate you joining us today. So I think most people think of iTron as a smart metering company, mm -hmm. but we make an incredibly powerful network platform that's useful for all sorts of applications beyond just basic metering. And so what we're trying to do with the iTron experience here is really tell the broader story of all of the capabilities of the system. You've got a whole, you've got a whole story to tell, and you've broken it up into downtown, rural, and suburban. How does this all work? So there are different use cases for different environments, right? Yeah. There are problems to solve in the urban environment that wouldn't necessarily apply in the rural environment. And so what we're trying to do is for each particular area, showcase solutions that would work in that, uh, in that environment. Let's head downtown. Great, let's do it. So what have we got here? So here in the downtown uh, area, we've got street lights and we've got gas uh, flowing into the home. We've got water flowing into the home. And if we take a look at this uh, street light up here. Oh, there we go. You saw that street light just it turned on, on brightly. It's really bright, right? Well, so this is an example of grid edge intelligence at work. So this street light sensed my hand waving in front of it. It sensed the motion. Yeah. And it decided to turn that light on fully bright. Now, while it was at it, the photo cell on top of that street light talked to this other photo cell over here. Okay. This is an example of grid edge intelligence. These devices made the command and control decision themselves. There was no signal sent to a back office. Up there to the, the big control center in the sky. Exactly. There was no human who made a decision. These street lights themselves made that choice. And this is something we're doing in Copenhagen today where they're concerned about ambient light pollution. Yeah. Right. So they have neighborhoods where they, uh, they don't want the lights on fully bright at night because it keeps people up. So what they do is they keep them down nice and dim, but then when a car or a bicycle or something like that comes to the intersection, they bring the light level up fully bright for public safety. So you've got the public safety, you've got the energy efficiency, you're, you're hitting a lot of, ticking a lot of boxes. Absolutely right. And as a network platform, street lights are wonderful, right? They're 30 feet up in the air. They've got line of sight connectivity. Uh, good canopy. For They're them. everywhere. So once that network is in place, you can use it for whatever smart city applications come along in the future. Wow, okay, cool. Let's go to the suburbs. Sounds good. I'll take a shortcut. So what do we got here? So this, uh, this station here, we're really highlighting our distributed uh, intelligence capabilities. Right. Okay. So uh, what we see here is we've got three meters on three different houses. Yeah. And our transformer is currently running at 63% of its rated capacity. Right. Now, how do we know that? We know that because these meters are really application platforms. There's a Linux computer inside every one of these meters. And they're running an application that allowed them to figure out which transformer they were talking to right. and to share their load information. So they know not only their load, they know the aggregate load across the entire uh, transformer for every device that's on. And these meters, they're not special meters. These are your standard shipping meters that you guys... Uh, uh, absolutely right. Or love, right? Yeah, correct. So what we're going to do now is we're going to see what uh, might happen in an active uh, load scenario. Right. Okay. So right now we're running at 63% of capacity. Uh -huh. And we can see we've got uh, an EV charger on our little electric uh, nice car down here. Beamer. A little green light there indicating that it's charging. Right. Well now the transformer, or sorry, the uh, compressor is turned off. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the temperature on this home, on their thermostat. Ah, so it's a bit warm, I'm making it a bit cooler. They came home from work a little early and they decided their house was too hot. Yeah. And so uh, momentarily here, our compressor will turn on. Right. There it goes. Okay, so we can see the air conditioning compressor has just turned on. So I've just put on more load onto the local circuit. That's right, you just added, uh, you just added load. Well now, uh -oh, our, our devices are talking, our meters are talking to each other, and you can see we're now running at 103% of rated capacity. So that's too high. But because these folks are on a demand response program, they've uh, volunteered to have their load shed in situations where there's stress on the grid. Okay. Okay, so that load has now been eliminated from this transform. Ah, okay. okay. Now these devices are talking to each other, and they're figuring out that things have changed. Right. So it's, it's doing local balancing. That's exactly right. This is not uh, some command from above telling it to turn off. These guys are talking to this transformer to protect the asset. They've decided that they need to get to, uh, to shut alone. And, and when you say these guys, the meters are talking to the transformer? 
But they're not talking to the transformer. Oh, sorry. They're, they're figuring out the aggregate load amongst themselves because they ah. know the meters that are, are connected. And you can see now, we're back running in the safe zone for the transformer. Pretty cool. Yeah. So it, it's, it's fulfilling the whole promise of having the smart sensors out of the edge and they start making decisions themselves. Yeah, and this kind of technology is going to be super important because utilities have aging infrastructure. Yep. Right? They've got transformers that have been out there for 30 years and they've got new loads, things like EV chargers, that just didn't exist when those neighborhoods were laid out. So the challenge of keeping all of that in balance is a real issue for utilities. Agreed. Right. Let's go to where I grew up, rural. Okay. So I want to draw your attention to that device up on the pole there. That's called a faulted circuit indicator. Right. right. And what that does is it measures different parameters uh, on the conductor. Things yeah. like how much current's going through it, and um, uh, temperature conductor, and things like that. Yeah. Okay, well we can see if we look at our farmhouse down here, the, uh, the power's on. To the house. Power's on to the house, everything's good. Yeah. Okay, but you see that tree. It's kind of doing something it shouldn't. Well, the wind picked up. The tree is now arcing across the wires, yeah. causing a fault. Bad things happened. Bad things. We can see the power's out at the house. The light's blinking on the FCI, indicating there's a problem. Yeah. And because we know the location of that FCI, we can dispatch a crew immediately to where the problem is. To the right, look, the right segment of the line. That's right. Instead of having repair crews driving around trying to do triage on the fly. Uh, look, driving along to see what they see, a branch to kind of... Uh, exactly. Uh, 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 line. And this, so this is distribution automation in action. And this, we do this sort of stuff for utilities all over the world. Wow. So... It's a, it, you're one of the few companies I've seen telling the end-to-end -end story. And as you said, you're known for the meters, but there's so much more. That's right. And the foundation of all this as well is the whole network. The network is really foundational to everything we do. Uh, we don't want to solve a problem. We want to build a platform that's useful not just today, but that can grow with you as your needs evolve in the future. You know, if we know anything for certain, it's that five years, 10 years, 15 years down the road, we're going to be doing things that we never dreamed of doing before. And so having this extensible platform is really key to your future success. And as you said, it's not that every piece of data from the local device goes up to the big cloud in the sky and someone does something and it comes back down. That's right. They, they look after themselves. That's the idea. That's the, that's the future. And, and, and they send up data when they need to, but oh, of it's, course. it's a whole Yeah, thing. exception reporting and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But if you can make the decisions locally, not only are you saving bandwidth, but you're also responding to events as they happen, which is really important. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Hey guys, I've been iTron experienced. <laughs>